yours, Melora. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, you're in trouble now. Uh, the human brain is such that if you have the front and the back of the dress pieced together, we will always see this as a pairing, as a couple, because our brains can't, it's much, much, much harder, if not impossible, for our brains to look at only this front neckline without automatically scrolling down to look at the corresponding back. And same thing here, if I tell you, okay, look at this really cool asymmetrical neckline, love this accent right here, your brain automatically then compares it to the back. And I don't want you to compare them. I don't want you to think of them as a unit. I want you to think of them as separate units. So Melora, I actually went in and separated your photos and turned them into fronts and backs. <laughs> but that's why, and I didn't say this, so this is actually fabulous that you did it because it will change the way you look at it. If I look at Carolyn's again, and I'm looking at only fronts, it's easier to dissect the items. It's easier to look at each specific little item, whether it's lace or a scoop neck or an asymmetrical accent than if you look here. When we look here, our brains treat it almost like we're shopping. So we consider the package. Does that make sense? So whenever you ladies are looking at your inspiration dresses online, I don't want you to look at the package. I would like for you to, uh, t you have to practice of course, but get the skills so that even when you're on, when if you're looking on Pinterest and you happen to see the front and the back of it, you can look at them separately and not have your brain complete this loop of, oh, this is a dress. We don't, we don't want our brain to have that limitation. We're trying to expand those horizons. Melora, you also did a really great job of having your camera at almost the exact same angle every time and cropping down to almost the exact same place every time. So very nice case study. Here we go. All right. So now you all can see just this back. You can see her only her back picture, right? Okay, good. That'll keep everything a little bit cleaner here and great variety. Hands down, I love, 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 love the asymmetrical backs on you. You have a fabulous figure that is perfect for the asymmetrical backs. They are, um, they tend to be more slimming on you because they um, create this nice long line and you've got a back to carry it off. So if I just compare these three because they're right in a row, this little high V back is actually, even if I talk about the green one here, is really not great on you because, well, it creates the skin gush right at the center back. Part of that's because it's too tight, a little bit too tight. Part of it's just age, because as we age, our skin gets looser and the skin doesn't want to go where we want it to go. Whereas over here, I don't even notice that. I just notice a really beautiful figure because the dress keeps my eye bouncing around your body all the way down your back. You have a fairly, um, your back is a little bit asymmetrical, which is common. So, I mean, I, I think I talked about that the other day. It's very common for someone to have, for a woman to have one breast larger than the other. I have one thigh, a full inch or 25 centimeters larger than the other thigh. So, I mean, it's, it's normal. I have one, one side of my hip curves out like that and the other side of my hip is much straighter. So asymmetries, don't feel bad about it. We all have them. In this case, your left shoulder blade is much larger and more rounded than your right shoulder blade. So when I'm looking at this dress in particular, maybe both of these, that's really obvious because the shape of the back frames the asymmetrical shoulder blades. Does that make sense? So it's basically making a symmetrical picture frame for an asymmetrical body part, which then emphasizes the asymmetrical body part. Whereas on this pink dress, you have this awesome diagonal line. So I'm not even looking at your shoulder blades at all. I'm looking at a cool asymmetrical line and a very tiny waist. So the pink one is fabulous. This, these two are equally fabulous. Um, one, they're just freaking cool. <laughs> they're cool designs. They have like fun accent colors and it really does a great job of 
because the shape of this particular black one is so different from right to left, I would not ever in a million years notice that you had one shoulder blade more rounded than the other shoulder blade. This is genius for your body shape right here. So if I had to give you, and then even though this one is equally exposed, because you have the straps quite a bit lower than the, they're basically bust support straps. And then, but I've still got this big asymmetrical swatch of skin right here, which does not allow my eye to settle and focus just on the shoulder blades. Now, if I choose to do that, can I tell that your left shoulder blade is a different shape than your right? Yes, I can. Is it the focal point of this red dress? Absolutely not. Whereas here, in this middle dress, it is. Um, this dress, I don't really care for. I am not a fan of these little wispy things on your arms. Based on the other dresses, I don't think it necessarily suits your personality. But when does dance actually suit our personality? <laughs> But when you have several options, it's best to choose the best features that you can. And the straps, curiously, which surprises me, I have to admit, these two backs are very, very similar. The, only, the primary difference is that there are these straps. Much to my surprise, if I were looking at this on paper, because having different shaped shoulders doesn't show up on a paper sketch, not even when you have a custom template. I would have guessed that like in my mind, if Melora sent me a picture of her in a swimsuit or like this evening gown, and I said, oh, she's got one shoulder blade larger than the other. My truth, I would have thought these crisscross straps would make it look worse, would emphasize the difference. And much to my surprise, the crisscross straps don't. I, I mean, I'm kind of floored by that, truthfully. I really thought it was going to make them look different and it does not. <laughs> so yeah, live and learn. There's a, a blog I will put a post to. It's a Latin dress, it's black with white. And she says when the dress was first made, it had black fringe. And when she got it, she didn't like the black fringe and she traded it out to white fringe. And in doing so, she completely changed the look of the dress. And I said, holy moly, that is freaking genius. And on paper, I would not ever have thought that. I was like, oh, well, that's going to look kind of weird, but it really didn't. So as, <laughs> as I say all this, it is not set in stone. Nothing is set in concrete because every fabric is different. Every comprehensive dress design is different. And therefore, once you create your design, which will, you know, we'll have some finals by the last day of this masterclass, be prepared to um, let go of it, to, to let it change because we are still working on paper with our 2D sketch and trying to turn that into something three dimensional. And even the best scientists are still going to make mistakes looking under the microscope. Um, evening gown is very elegant. Maybe it's a ball gown. It could be either, you know, based on this view. I think this is very elegant. And if it's an evening gown, typically we would have a wrap over it or a little jacket and it would be beautiful. So my least favorite dress on this woman's figure, on this particular figure is this, this large drape across the back. It completely camouflages her tiny waist. You can't see it at all. Maybe I can from the front, but for sure, whatever, doesn't matter what the front looks like, the back does not do any, doesn't do her figure justice. Any questions on all that before I go to share her front neckline? Mm -hmm.